Welcome to the Weekly Notebook Review. I am Robert McGrorty. This podcast takes on a bit of a different format where we are live each week on Twitter Spaces. I crack open my notebook and review Hedgeye research with anyone who wants to learn a better way to invest. We feature both Hedgeye power users as well as some special guests that might pop in. If you want to learn more about our research, visit Hedgeye.com. If you'd like to participate in the live stream, follow me on Twitter at HedgeyeRJM. Now, let's review the data. All right. Well, good afternoon to another episode of the Weekly Notebook Review. I am your host, Robert McGrory. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks for the, uh, well, apologies for the hiatus last week, but we were uh, traveling and then we had kind of a an offsite. And then I was hosting hosted the macro show on Thursday morning. I knew I was doing that. So kind of got a version of the Notebook Review, but uh, just in a different format and a video format. So if you uh, or a Hedge Eye subscriber, uh, by all means, uh, you know, the Macro Show comes out at 9 a.m. It's one of our most popular products, uh, usually hosted by uh, the big man himself, Keith McCullough, uh, a.k.a. Coach. But uh, I had the pleasure of getting the uh, shoulder tap and, and, and hosted that last Thursday. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it. But we are back to the regular program here. It's a notebook review. If you've got any questions or wish to comment, by all means, uh, come on up and and uh, be a speaker um this this format this event this uh session is really you know it's for hedge nation it was started by hedge nation members by myself and and a few others who um who were really you know going through the notebook right so did the weekend work reviewing what was transpiring midweek kind of what signals have, have changed or shifted and how to think through the portfolio makeup and risk management uh, moving forward into into next week, next month, next quarter, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are almost at the end of October here, the, the first month of Q4. Uh, year end is around the corner, but as uh, Keith and the rest of the Hedge Eye team, including myself, will uh, you know, continue to remind everybody, it's uh, less about the year to date, uh, certainly a lot less about the year to date, and a lot more about the cycle to date and you know, going back and, and trying to capture those full sign curves, right? The the peak to trough moments, um, you know, we certainly, if you go with the, the Russell 2000, um, you know, whether you're looking at the the peak from 21 or the peak from, uh, you know, July 31st of, of this year, uh, those, those have been significant down moves and, and, you know, the Russell is down uh, another 1% today. Um, so again, the, you know, the markets, uh, a lot of red out there, volatility, uh, is elevated. Interestingly enough, the, the VIX is uh, just kind of poking its head back up over 20. Um, the Russell Vol, the RVX is uh, just under 25 and, and the Vixen is uh, just under 24. So um, a lot of these U.S. equity volatility measures are certainly um, you know, firmly in the low end of the chop bucket. Uh, for those that don't know what that means, that's the VIX range from 19 to 29. And then as we get north of 29, that's called the F bucket. And below 19 is the investable bucket. That's where we'd been uh, for a good chunk of this year. Almost all of this year was in that investable bucket. And you can see that from kind of the, the year to date returns, I guess. Although I just said we weren't, wouldn't talk about or wouldn't look at those. But, you know, a lot of people do have, to, you know, they do have that bogey on their back. I see um, some, some friendly faces out there like, like George Syracuse who, you know, his clients do look at, at kind of uh, uh, look at things and now not always. And then I know George coaches them to, to look at the, the full cycle as well. But, um, but yes, I mean, I think it's, it's really important, right? The, the trend and momentum is certainly to the downside. And uh, most recently across the board, across U S equities. Um, so, you know, we're seeing that continue. Um, now, could you see a bit of an oversold situation here uh, today? You know, going into um, GDP and and uh, PC, I believe is tomorrow. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, PC uh, tomorrow, and then we got uh, personal, personal spending and personal income on Friday. So you do have some macroeconomic data points uh, rolling in. You know, pre market tomorrow, which should be should be interesting. Obviously, it's always interesting when you get big big data points. But, um, but yeah, so I think from there, you know, the big big callouts to me today. And what I'm I'm tracking is is certainly, you know, U.S. equity vol. But really, it's volatility across the board. I mean, I, I say that a lot, but it's U.S. equity vol. Uh, the move index is back down to 128, so it's down a, a little bit on uh, on the kind of day over day basis. That's as of yesterday's close. 
um, OVX and GVZ uh, both ha- are elevated. So that GVZ is actually pushing up towards 17, uh, which is which is interesting. OVX is uh, about or just just north of 42, uh, with oil and and gold both up. So uh, you know the move today, and, and and you saw that from any of your your products that you might get from Edgeye, whether it be ETF Pro or or, or the new kind of re rank portfolio solutions. But you know Keith was was adding energy exposures, uh, even added some some new commodity exposures there as well, which which is uh, I guess interesting uh, to me. But um, yeah, I've been I've been looking at, and I think we've talked here about you know DBA and DBB. Um, on notebook review, he added just the broader basket of commodities, so DBC, um, which again, yes. So that that does, if you kind of dive into that, that's an Invesco ETF. If you dive into that, um, it, it kind of reflects the CRV index a little bit. But so the, the big weights there, if memory serves, I need to go back here and, and look at it on DBC. But I believe it's it's kind of the it's oil. You know, it's got some ag in there. It's got uh, energy, uh, corn, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, you know, it's just kind of another another way of adding to some of the existing exposures uh, of that inflation. Um, we are we continue to see quad threes in Q4 of this year, Q1 and Q2 of next year. So that's decelerating growth and accelerating inflation. Now those inflationary numbers, I think I called it out um, either two weeks ago or or most recently. But basically, you know, those inflationary numbers are uh, right on pretty darn close to the uh, y-axis in terms of. Uh, perhaps decelerating as well. So just kind of keep an eye on those as you know data rolls out and and whatnot. But certainly with oil up at, at 84, it's one of the largest components of of um, of inflation. And you know that's that's been sticky and higher for longer. And we're expecting that to to remain the same. So uh, this this inflationary exposure uh, certainly has been paying off. You know things like uranium have been awesome. Um, you know I think the other big component is. Uh, and it was just part of the top three things this morning on on the macro show. But uh, Asian equities, <laughs> you know, they they're, the list is dwindling. Uh, you know, we had been very, uh, we have been long and strong in Japan at four different ETF exposures in the uh, micro family office. Uh, that is now um, down to, uh, I believe, so oh, the one last lonely little soul right at the right at the very bottom. Uh, so we're still long Japan value, but uh, you know EWJ is out, and so in in the Asian front, really, it's just India as the sole man standing there. Uh, with uh, that's kind of worth worth um, your time and energy and, and risk management. So uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic because the last probably three three months, you know, the the Japan and India, there have been a couple areas there that you could even uh, South Korea. We were along South Korea for for a little bit. You know, there there were definitely some some components um, in Asia that that were trending bullishly and um, or had a bullish trend, and we were long of them. So, uh, but now you know we we risk managed we have risk managed those, and, and I think uh, have done a really good job there as well. So, uh, keep keep an eye on on India, uh, Japan is right there, right? It's it's if you uh, if you pull up the quad outlook from. You know the the macro show deck. You should have that in there. Um, if not, yeah, you know, it's been in there recently. Uh, you know, the, there are some quad fours on the on the on the board coming up. So maybe the, the markets are kind of front running those and, and a bit of slow and growth. So um, just kind of interesting dynamics there. Just wanted to call that out. I think the other other thing too is is Europe is certainly in a uh, is I guess in a tough spot to say the least. Uh, the DAX signal continues to. Strengthened to the downside, aka weaken, um, which is which is a uh, which is really a good thing. It's you want to kind of continue to see lower lows and lower highs. You know, generally I've talked about this number of times too. Looking at those risk range signals on a day over day and week over week basis. So I uh, just kind of want to reiterate that. And yeah, I mean the 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 elite eight: uh, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Meta, Google, Netflix, Tesla, and Nvidia. You know, those are um, they're they're all other reporting or have reported recently or will be reporting in the next sort of uh, week or so so again it's it's it got we're right in the thick of earnings season it's going to be interesting to see kind of how the the conference calls are certainly you know google and and freebird you know like the numbers on paper but the market is not liking um what we what we're seeing out there so 
I mean, down almost uh, down nine percent on the day. Uh, so again, it's 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 very interesting. I think you you got to make sure that when you're reviewing the call and reviewing even macro ETFs, right? You, you got to you are the portfolio manager. You are the risk manager. So you need to be making sure that you are getting your sizing and uh, ideally also your timing uh, correct, right? So uh, Hedgeye certainly helps with the timing side uh, point of things, and and you've got to understand from a sizing standpoint, you know what is right for your portfolio, what is right for your life, what is right for uh, whatever you're doing. Um, so again, so if you're kind of younger, maybe you can take a little bit more risk because retirement's uh, a little further out uh, the horizon. If you're uh, closer to that retirement age, you're you're going to want to kind of dial back that that risk that risk tolerance. And I know you know George is been on here a number of times. I see him. I see John Canapress out there. Welcome. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, you know, these guys manage money and uh, book a business professionally for a living. Um, so I think those having those very uh, frank and honest conversations with your clients is crucial. And having them comfortable with being, you know, long, some of the top things that, that you know, we along, which are, you know, basically short maturity, short duration um, type T-bills and stuff like that, right? So uh, even just money market and, and cash accounts, I know it's I know it can be challenging to get your or to from a compliance standpoint for for some um, to justify the you know short duration or, or certainly to be holding a lot of cash, but that's that's really uh, the place to be. And uh, my good friend Chris Moyer, who I see is listening in from the UK, uh, shout out to that that kind soul over there. Um, by the way, watched a little bit of Bex, the, uh, the that new Beckham documentary. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, highly recommend. On Netflix, um, but anyway, uh, getting back to what I was trying to uh, go down the past on is, um, oh, he he he's mentioned time and time again on here on Notebook Review that if you're coming out of kind of a a, a gross slowing environment, whether it really be quad four or quad three, and you're you're flat to slightly down to slightly up, uh, you are absolutely winning because you want to be able to you know preserve protect your harder capital in order for you to compound it when the time is right. So compounding it in quad two, quad one environments are a lot easier. Um, and certainly everybody looks like a stock picking genius um, during those environments. So you want to be able to have have that pile of capital, that pile of capital available to you, uh, not doing kind of, uh, kind of, I won't say stupid things, but certainly um, uh, poor timing decisions in terms of kind of looking at things from uh, well, you know, valuations or, or cause they can get cheaper. Right. So I think, uh, those are some big, big components that I just want to kind of review here in this first 15 minutes. I don't know if anybody wants to jump up and, and chat or comment, George, uh, I don't know if you're available to do that. And you're also traveling with your, your family while managing your book of business. But, um, but yeah, let's, uh, well, folks either do jump up or not, we can, dive into some of the you know xlu went back to uh the board there i believe uh, coach even hit the yeah he hit the rta so i've been in some meetings this morning so not as uh yeah so hit, hit the rta on xlu today um it is trading was that risk range was uh 56 about 99 to 59 it's about 99 on the xlu so we are are pretty darn close to the top end of that risk range um especially if you shorted it about a half an hour ago, um, but uh, but yeah, but that's another again. You know, if you kind of look at press, you know, it's not even pressing. It's just you know, you, you want to be short or out of components. You know, areas that are you know bearish trend, making lower lows, lower highs. Uh, XLU has been doing that. Um, I think the the other you know U.S. oil. We certainly we added that today uh, to uh, ETF Pro. So again, those energy longs, those inflationary uh, kind of longs, exposures. That's uh, that's where we are. Uh, that's the hinge ground that we are uh, perusing at the moment, and it's been very fruitful. So uh, you know the the oil component, I think, is again, it's 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 an interesting one. Um, you know, we you were seeing some lower highs, you know, last week. And even a little bit earlier this week as well. So just kind of keep an eye on that. You know, you, you really want to see, you know, price when we had this big move in price for, on the oil front. You really want to see that, you know, price action continue to, to move higher. Um, so kind of that 82, what was the, the high? It was like 90, 90, 82 or so, right? Um, USO uh, a couple of weeks ago. What was that late? Uh, or October 20? No. Yeah. Uh, about a week and a half ago, October 20th. 
Um, it was just last week. Yeah, so last week on that, on that kind of recent high of 82, 83, you know, you're really going to want to see that top end of the risk range start to push higher than that. So if you want to, you know, look at that CL, um, again, you know, if you're kind of looking at crude oil, um, it is currently the top end of the risk range at 90, what was it today? 90, uh, no, 89 is about 92. So kind of right in um, just above the the most recent high from like a week a week or so ago. So um, you, you are seeing those, again, you, that's kind of how you can overlay the risk ranges with with um, the price action, stuff like that. So, you know, we're, we're in, you're really going to want to see that price can kind of continue to, to move higher and and firm up here. So again, who knows why it w- might do that, but or might not. So if it does start to break down, you, you know, Keith is going to be out of uh, out of energy and oil um, faster than you can say hello uh, or goodbye. <laughs> so, so yeah, just kind of keep keep uh, a keen eye on those. But but yeah, oil oil right here. If you certainly if you haven't been long of oil since like you know July time frame when we got in. Um, you know, this is, you know, always going to be another good spot to, to reenter, but, um, all right. The, uh, other thing I think Keith mentioned this on Mac show this morning, but, but certainly volume, uh, volume on the update yesterday was down day over day, but minus 3%, uh, down minus 2% on a one month basis. And, uh, uh, but was up, you know, plus one on a three month basis. You know, I think the, the interesting thing too, you know, the day before that, down day you had you had up volume so you're seeing kind of you know up volume up volatility down price and on up days you're seeing up price down down volume in kind of you know flat to slightly down um vix so again you know those those three things are are telling you or kind of reiterating that that trend the trend and momentum is to the downside at, at this point in time so uh those are kind of big components i always have i was telling billy Zegers, who I see he listening in, he was asking me some questions on just kind of, you know, tools that I use, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, think how, how I think through things. And uh, in trading view, I love trading view. It's one of my, my, basically, I live in there almost all day long. And, you know, the, the great thing about trading view is that you can have indicators. And so, you know, a couple of the indicators that I always have up are, are average volume at time, which I think I've talked about on here. So I look at a five day look back window. And then realize realize volatility. Um, I, I use a thirty day look back. So you know that realized volatility. That volatility piece helps influence my sizing. And then the volume. And obviously, I've got kind of you know watch list for volatility and stuff like that. So you know, looking at and even the realized volume, you can use as kind of like a rudimentary uh, measure. If if that volatility is you know moving higher, then you know that volatility for that particular piece of inventory it is obviously elevated or, or rising um so you can kind of combine all those three things price volume volatility um again it's not i, I don't have a signal i don't have access to key signal but um you know you can use those to kind of try to make better decisions timing decisions etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, it's one of the beauties of, of tra- trading view and i know you know many out there um, do leverage trading view and and even some have written scripts and stuff like that for trading view so if uh, you have a script that Helps combine some of this stuff. Uh, by all means, you share it or share it in the arena uh, at Hedge Eye. You know, this that's that's the community arena, right? So it's where everybody can kind of ask questions, converse, discuss, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I know it really stinks that you can't put your own name on there, um, and you get sort of a side to name that you can't change. But um, it is what it is. We got to just go make the best best of what we got, and that's a great great area to um, kind of post questions and whether you're new or season bet. All right, well, I'm going to pause and take a little sip of water. And if anybody wants to jump up, as I said, you know, by all means, this is for, for the nation. So uh, I'll happy to either ask questions or, sorry, answer questions. If you want to just kind of chat through what you're seeing out in your in your portfolio, things that are going well, things that are going poorly, I'm happy to do that too. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of take a minute. The one area we haven't talked about is fx uh and really it's kind of seen basically the same, same old same old um you know at the moment right now you just you know to me you're just seeing a lot of similar trending components right so the, the dollar's trending bullishly or positively uh the euro and other and you know pound have been you know trending bearishly uh japanese yen or u.s dollar jpy cross has been you know a bullet you know basically been bullish and has been so for a while 
Uh, you know, similarly to, again, you kind of make that same statement about um, commodity exploders. You can make that same statement about, uh, you know, just in terms of the trend, right? Like the, the trend on from energy in particular has been, you know, up and to the right. Trend from, uh, you know, U.S. equity exposure has been <laughs> down and to the right, um, right? So, um, this and these are, you know, you're seeing these like very, you know, these trends are basically have been established and, and continue to you know, feed on themselves. And, and that's one component too of like negative gamma, which is the environment that we're in for the S, S&P, uh, SP 500, SPX. So that negative gamma, it, it does go both ways, right? So on, on up days or when the market sort of picks up some, you know, speed to the upside, you know, dealers kind of have to chase that, right? So, but you also see it to the downside. And so you really, in these negative gamma environments, you see, you know, and I, I kind of try to explain it, uh, I try to keep things as simple as I can for my little pea brain and negative gamma environments is where you just see, ele- you know, kind of basically like elevated volatility, right? So like, like price action will just move faster. And so they can be good if you're, if you're nimble and you're, you know, whether you trade options or not, but uh, I can also be, you know, challenging because, you know, the big up day in price action and have you kind of questioning, okay, is this, this the beginning of the new, new rally uh, or, or what have you? And, and I think, um, and same thing with like on down days, it's like, okay, well, do I cover some puts? Do I, what do I, you know, what do I do? Or, and that's, and yeah, so it's just like, the, the, but the point is, is that these, these trends have been established and, and, you know, you're seeing pretty clear definitions here in terms of, um, you know, where, where one should be positioned and, and how. Oh, George's question. Hey, George. How you doing, buddy? What's up, Robert? How are you been? I'm too well, man. Yeah, excited to see you in Chicago. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, I got to book my flight. I got the hotel. I need to book my flight, so thanks for the reminder. Uh, <laughs> I'm in the seat. Well, Charles. <laughs> Yeah, for those that, that aren't aware, we're we're doing a, a Edge Eye Regional in Chicago November 9th. So should be a great uh, great time. If you're interested, you can uh, just Google or, or go find, I think it's just like hedgeyeregional.com, I think it is. But yeah, um, they're always a, a great, great experience, George. Excited. So I'll pitch in here just to try to get the conversation going. Yeah. Today, you know, what we're doing. So nothing I say here is advice. Of course, not. what we're doing. So... I don't transact as much as Keith, but I still use the process as my uh, guiding light in many ways. So, uh, since July 19th, we've uh, had one of our largest positions as uh, the US dollar, as well as uh, PFIX. Um, still have gold and gold miners. Uh, obviously, the, the war kind of bailed us out a little bit with the gold positions also uh, the oil and gas pipelines and uh, agricultural commodities uh, one thing I did do that's kind of unique uh, to us is I bought uh, stonks uh, you know uh, just the index uh, at the end of uh, the month on extreme fear reading got a little bit of a bounce and uh, maybe hitting the stop loss here. Uh, things don't look too good, but I'll give it a little bit of breathing room. But we're pretty close. And also very excited to see the uh, five-year auction results in four minutes here. So curious if anyone else uh, wants to share what they're doing, uh, what their portfolio is looking like, or, or what they're uh, particularly intrigued here and going forward. Um, obviously, the earnings that we got last night was... Uh, pretty entertaining so curious what everyone else was thinking yeah no appreciate it georgia thanks for jumping up and and yeah i i, <laughs> I will say the last few weeks i've paid more attention to uh treasury auctions than i ever have in my entire 39 year uh, life lifespan uh strange so. i i couldn't understand what was happening <laughs> right at 1 p.m while the market was selling off and now i've discovered uh andy constant and uh treasury auction <laughs> right that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh yeah, it's uh, been been adding those to the notebook when when those when those transpire, but pretty pretty regularly to get a to get some form of other a, a, 
a D bill or, or note auction around the one on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursday. Um, yeah, Leo, welcome, my friend. Another guy, so even, another guy that does it for a living. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I know. It's, it's not, interesting hearing about the P fix love, right? Yeah, P fix. It's, it's like a tech stock. It's like what up seventy percent since August. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. So yeah, I, I think we're pretty similar. We're a little bit heavier into individual oils, uh, XNL Petroleum, uh, our second biggest holding behind gold, uh, and, and cash is obviously number one. <laughs> um, kind of going from there with it. A firm is working really well on the short side today, which is nice because that has stayed up higher uh, in these high teens longer than I thought it was going to. So we're pulling back a little bit on that position today on the short side. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it'd be interesting to see if this is really the, finally the move that kind of pulls things away. And as they take the Magnificent 7 down to the Magnificent 5, how many people are going to hold these to the new year just for the tax ramifications? Yeah, we might have to start calling them the Fancy 5 or something, right? Or the Fabulous Trump. <laughs> the Fabulous five. Uh, yeah, uh, I, w- I will say just again, like you know, we do try to uh, you know think through longer term. Um, but the ECB uh, ECB monetary policy is out tomorrow morning at eight fifteen uh, a.m. Eastern. So I kind of forgot to mention that. So you know, sometimes those can you know have a uh, adverse effect or you know on, on the dollar. Um, but certainly, you know, just something to be paying attention to. And it doesn't you know it doesn't mean it, it will happen, but just uh, always good to, to know. Um, about what what's what could be impacting the markets on a on a short term basis, and and get and potentially giving you an opportunity, you know, to buy uh, to buy some more dollars, which which we were buying uh, yesterday. Uh, Leo, yeah. So, you know, in terms of the energy exposures, you said you're going a bit a, a bit more individual names. Any any particular reason doing that? I mean, other than obviously being more targeted. You are on mute, just so you know, if you're answering me. Oh. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we have a lot of long-standing positions uh, in the oil uh, idea since Occidental has been there. Our Merit oil is there. Gotcha. Uh, those are kind of the two ones that I <clears throat> I, I tend to stick with there. Yeah. Occidental because of the, the constant bid at 57 by... Uh, by Warren Buffett there, so that's kind of kept that in. Um, Devin's been one of the ones we added this year. Sure. Uh, when oil kind of got put back on the, the block went in July, so that's uh, got some nice cash flows to it. So those are probably my three uh, individual ring holdings. Sure, sure. So Marathon Oil probably has the most beta of the three. Uh, Devin hasn't worked yet, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know uh, Fang, Fang is obviously... A popular one is, but uh, from what I'm seeing, pretty, you know, pretty good, pretty good uh, single strength. Uh, NPC, NPC would be up there as well. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you, you got uh, Hal, you know Halbert, um, and yeah, yeah, not just yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, it's always good to uh, round out some uh, uh, CTRA, uh, which is actually kind of recently popped up into my uh, my screen or my screening. Our screening tool uh so that's Gotera energy uh but yeah no there's definitely some some good winners uh, some good opportunities to express the energy long in that capacity george do you, you you primarily stick to etfs right but yeah we're mostly etfs uh particularly in what i call tactical preservation or tactical recession mode so once we get a yield, inverted yield curve i just try to keep things as simple as possible and you know we'll just add a uh, stock etf on oversold just so we don't have too much uh, benchmark drift but you know just trying to keep it simple and preserve uh clients capital is the number one objective when you're in this kind of you know pre-recessionary environment i gotta look up these uh, auction results Previous five year note auction was five spot six five nine. Today's was five spot eight nine nine. So call it 
Call, sorry, four four spot uh, eight nine nine. So call it four ninety. And Andy Constant gave it a D, <laughs> and then the market pulled off. Give it, give it a D. Uh, um, that's funny. So uh, you know, yesterday was a C for the two year. I think so many people are buying CDs, um, and are going into those shorter duration funds that you'll probably have a better demand on the short end than on the long end. Yeah, it makes sense. And five years isn't that far out, but not as many people are buying five-year products that are supported by treasuries, you know. I know when I do, like, guaranteed uh, solutions for people, not not going out beyond three years. Interesting. I mean, that makes those make sense. Yeah, because who knows what the reaction will be to uh, the likely impending recession. If it's, uh, depending on who's in charge, if they turn the money printer back on, we could have much higher interest rates and even higher inflation. So uh, it's hard to know what's happening next quarter, let alone five years from now, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just laughing because it's like, it's very true. Uh, it's, it's very, very true. The the yield curve has been absolutely shrunk. No, it was shrunk today. It's up like it's up like forty percent, up uh, eleven over eleven basis points. Um, that's a massive move. Massive move in the yield curve uh, with the ten minus twos. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, anyway. Yeah, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, it's uh, George. It's it's funny because. Uh, it certainly, yeah, it was it never really, not, not that I didn't pay attention to them, but it was just sort of, okay, interesting, right? Like another, another bond auction, but uh, lately it's been very, uh, it's been an, a crucial daily, um, like economic, like just a data point. Um, yeah. Yeah, no surprise with our fiscal issues, so. The other thing that I find really interesting is tomorrow is the GDP release, right? Yep, and and PCD. Yep. So is good news bad news? Uh, yeah, I mean time will tell, right? Like, oh, I don't pretend to know. I, <laughs> no, I think mean, like it's just unfortunately you now there's. But yeah, no, it, it's it's certainly one of these things where, uh, yeah, I mean, I just I kind of lean back to my commentary about like the, the trends that we're in and, and the momentum, right? The momentum and the trend for U.S. equities is is down. Um, the momentum and trend for inflationary assets is up. Um, you know, the the trend and momentum for for bonds, uh, generally, like U.S. bonds and even even uh, you know global bonds, you're seeing it in. In the in the the German ten year, the even the Japanese ten year, I mean, it's basically the yields are 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 moving higher, as so basically up, right? So like the, these these trends, the dollar is is up um, from a trend and momentum standpoint. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like they like, so you know, again, they'll just just call it you know trade and trend. So it's it's there's there's just a lot of a lot of things are happening, and and you, you're going to need a yeah, you're going to need. Um, volume and price to to come in and and for volatility to to basically slow down in order to get any form of a of a uh kind of you know turnaround or sort of a a floor right yeah agreed yeah yeah third thursday so you got uh continue jobless claims uh all these data points basically there's a ton of stuff coming out at 8 30 so you got continuous jobless claims you got um, core personal consumption. Um, so, C, so uh, PC. You've got uh, durable goods, goods orders. Uh, you've got uh, goods trade balance, GDP, uh, jobless claims. Yep. So initial. So yeah, continuing and initial, and then uh, non defense capital goods orders, uh, PC as well, and wholesale inventories. Yeah. So yeah, it's a big. You got pending home sales at ten, and yeah, that's about it. Then seven year auction at at one. George, another another note auctions. 
Yeah, and it's of uh, more duration, going a little further out. I know it's not as big of an auction as we had today, but it, I don't know. The, from what I'm seeing, I just think the further out you get on the curve, the worse the auction is going to be. Um, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Fed now casting, and take it with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they got PCE because uh, we're reporting September, zero point three five percent month over month forecast, zero point two nine percent month over month core PCE forecast. And then just zooming out for the year over year for September, PCE 3.46 and 3.7 on core. Interesting. Yeah, we're uh, I was just pulling up our most recent numbers. Sorry, just give me one second. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're, you said GDP? Yeah, so GDP... For Q3, we're looking at uh, 250 basis points. Consensus estimates are 2 spot 5.9. This is uh, as of Monday, so things may have changed. The the Atlanta Fed nowcast model, GDP now model, is at uh, 3 spot 06. So we are at the kind of low end of, uh, all, all, of all of those, but uh, certainly a uh, rate of change acceleration from Q2, which came in at uh, 2 spot 3.8. So, um, you know, kind of be interesting but then it starts to really ramp lower george with uh we're, we're our our now cast models looking for 169 basis points positive uh next quarter in q4 this quarter excuse me q4 and then 100 bips in q1 and in 45 bips in uh q2 so that really changes, your rear uh, numbers, right yeah 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 yep, yep. the median forecast for tomorrow's gdp quarter over quarter is 4.7 it's hot yeah, yeah. Coupled with the uh, treasury auction, <laughs> this could be. Yeah. This is a really interesting setup. You know, it's that's why we. I love what we do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um. All right. Well, if anybody wants to jump up, ask you know, get any other commentary questions, uh, we can do that. Otherwise, we can just kind of wrap up and get back to our programs where are you uh are you still traveling with family um George? i'm in uh i've been in virginia a lot more uh, here nice. now leaving for in nice. Indiana tomorrow i'm gonna go see a client out there and uh that's good take the family to the a notre dame game on saturday so that'll, that'll be yep. a nice little really fun this weekend brilliant brilliant what do we got this weekend i haven't looked at the schedule pittsburgh panthers they're not very good so Hopefully they run up the score and everybody has fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Notre Dame. That's a that's a great that's a great weekend. A great experience. One of my favorite places to uh, to visit and certainly to watch football. Go Irish. Go Irish, baby. All right. Well, no one's jumping up, so we'll just wrap up. That was a good good session. Again, apologies for the uh, apologies for the issues on x aka twitter i still don't, i still call it twitter but um but yeah we'll see everybody next week let me just look at the schedule yeah i think we'll be back to the kind of like a 4 30 slot uh one second that's november 1st day after halloween i hope everyone has a good trick-or-treat action uh the pitch is actually happening on the first so that's uh that's free so that's start jumping off November. Um, that'll be in the morning at 11. And yeah, so we'll do notebook review 4.30 that Wednesday, November 1st, start the month off, uh, so the month off right. And we'll see other folks. Um, if, again, if you're interested in Chicago, November 9th, the following week, uh, should be a, a great, it's always a great event and uh, great to see a donation together. We'll be doing kind of a live notebook review the following morning. So that's a Thursday. We'll do it Friday morning. Uh, for those that attend, just kind of meeting in the in the lobby, what have you, of the hotel, and uh, and and yeah, we'll go from there. But hope everyone has a great rest of their afternoon, and good luck trading out there and uh, risk managing your portfolio. All the best.
Don't forget to check out Hedgeye.com to get more actionable investing insights from our team of more than 40 research analysts. And check us out on Twitter at our handle, at Hedgeye. This presentation is informational only. None of the information contained herein constitutes an offer to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any security or investment vehicle, nor does it constitute investment recommendation or legal, tax, accounting, or investment advice by Hedgeye or any of its employees, officers, agents, or guests. This information is presented without regard for individual investment preferences or risk parameters and is general, non-tailored, non-specific information. This content is based on information from sources believed to be reliable. Hedgeye is not responsible for errors, inaccuracies, or omissions of information. The opinions and conclusions contained in this report are those of the individual expressing those opinions and conclusions and are intended solely for the use of Hedgeye subscribers and the authorized recipients of the content. All investments entail a certain degree of risk and financial instrument prices can fluctuate based on several factors, including those not considered in the preparation of the content. Consult your financial professional before investing. The information contained herein is protected by United States and foreign copyright laws and is intended solely for the use of its authorized recipient. Access must be provided directly by Hedgeye. Redistribution or republication is strictly prohibited. For more detail, please refer to the terms of service at hedgeye.com slash terms of service. 